we are back to you guys with another season of cosmic crucible uh we are going to go over all the rooms the details that we learned uh over the tournament footage we had an envoy tournament uh for some of you guys who uh were not aware of it there was a full-fledged tournament uh between some of the cc envoys uh they played against they were pitched against each other and um they were, there were some in interesting points that were found within those fights i uh went ahead and watched the videos i re-watched them i replayed them i uh paid attention to the details for each room and hence we're bringing to you guys our learning points for each room we're gonna give our suggestions on what uh, teams would be useful for each room now keep in mind as the season uh proceeds and moves forward uh the best defense might change for each room but as of the making of this video uh i think based on what we saw these are the most difficult rooms or uh the most difficult rooms to deal with in terms of spreading your offensive power um i i have some of my suggestions and i will tell you guys what approach i'm taking and you guys can go ahead and decide how you wanna uh, think about um when uh, placing your new defenses i personally um went ahead with the balanced version of uh, my defense i think um where i'm standing in the crucible leagues right now uh, i want to briefly also show you guys uh, we are facing these 90 million people and just to give you guys an idea i'm at the bottom of this chart and i'm only 52 million so potentially we might be uh, forced to punch up 30 million 40 million uh the elo system is wonked out absolutely wonked out uh also i'm gonna show you guys my my league points uh my head might be in the way but 1475 uh and uh we ended the last season 1580 so i was personally dropped down by 1005 points and it's pretty bonkers like the audacity to do this and uh want to show you guys the rewards too also the season rewards are absolutely disgusting and absolutely mediocre not even worth trying to climb and um it says 83 days so it's i'm assuming that's the accurate time so that will be around um a month and a half or so but hey yeah without further ado let's jump into the best defenses uh up first in room one we have field medic um field medic uh it heals your characters or enemy characters for that matter um based on the number of vulnerables if you have a stack of two vulnerables you're gonna heal 20 percent for each vulnerable that's 40 percent of your max health that you're gonna heal so for this team uh, you want to go ahead and put one of your fast teams fast teams such as secret defenders such as um, your black order such as quicksilver dark hold um extreme team pegasus team um any team that um have the capacity to go on their stealth and give them themselves the chance to take their turn and heal uh, I personally went with Darkhold because I uh, I didn't have any better room to put them in. But I, I guess Extreme could be a valid op option as well. They get barrier, protect themselves, and um, a Nightcrawler even gets safeguard. But there are better, better rooms for those guys as well. Uh, the only team that I would not put in this room is going to be the Spider Society and uh, the reason for that is because the spider society uh clear their own vulnerable so you don't get um to use this to your advantage benjamin parker's clear clear the vulnerables um on 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 any attack that he attacks into a vulnerable so that's that's about that so i went ahead with the dark hole team because i'm not using them on offense 
and I put Quicksilver with them just to make it a little bit more annoying. Um, they they will mostly go under stealth. They will give themselves turn bar. I know it can be easily tangled, but um, assuming that they open up with Skirmisher on Agatha and stun on Quicksilver, uh, we can see the the chance there to for them for the rest of them to get the heal uh, while they'll focus on uh, Quicksilver. But but that's about that. That's not not a too difficult room. Second room is very interesting. This is actually uh, I'm. I wouldn't say a selling point for Max for Money, but this team is designed for Max for Money. They already sold the team, very sold, absolutely bonkers team. Um, th this team operates on bleeds. It applies bleeds to both sides. And um, basically any uh, time that someone gains bleed also gains damage. Uh, but uh, Old Man Logan's kit operates on bleed. Basically, uh, his entire team applies bleed. Panda pool has bleed. Deadpool has bleed. Deathpool has bleed. And um, Daken, also the most crazy one with the highest damage, has the bleed. And Logan gives them turn bar, gives himself turn bar every time uh, someone gets a bleed. And even if you're placing Logan with some randos, he will still apply the speed bar to himself because of uh, the bleed automatically being there in the room. Um, right now I'm using my secret defenders because I don't have my Logan geared but over the weekend I'm planning to bring up Logan and place uh, him in place of Photon and I think um, uh, having for now at least until I gear up my marks for money having partial Mm, secret defenders and old logan will be interesting as well because it throws off uh new warriors because basically miss marvel will go after um gwenom has started her taunt and she will do the rewind then and she will clear the taunt then so that's about that and um it's one of my bigger teams so i'm putting them on defense for now and i put noir with them because of mainly this reason because of this room because under the weather room, room number four applies defense down, offense down, and a slow. And one thing is important to know here is that, um, say, if your characters, say, if you're using Infinity Watch, let's say Nebula go goes on her first turn and uh, she finishes her first turn, she will. I paid attention to the tournament video and this is what I saw. She actually gets the negative effects first and then clears the immunity buff off of herself. So she will actually not get the uh, negative debuffs. And um, having Black Knight in this room is interest makes it more interesting. Why? Because Black Knight's kit operates based on shredding through immunity and uh, that's right in in the top line here not the top line actually let's see so um, on his passive attack he clears immunity and apply heal block trauma and three bleeds so in this case in this scenario here if Nebula attacks into your team first before your team has gone and your Black Knight obviously is not exhausted when she does her thing when he does her stuff uh, Black Knight will actually shred the immunity off of her and put the bleeds and then she will get the negative effects so basically she will actually get the so your infinity watch is, is gonna fail there basically if someone is using Black Knight against them. So that's why I'm, I'm putting Black Knight in this room and that's going to be a certainty for me at least for the first couple of weeks until we figure something better out. Oops. And the rest of my guys, they clear their debuffs off of themselves. They heal themselves. So, um, and they're just an annoying team. So even if you exhaust the Black Knight, so you sack it and go in, it's still a tough team to deal with, with all the... Uh, stuns, Palvitar damage, Benjamin Parker healing, and pinks from 
uh, your Gwen lady there. And that's that's about the under weather room. Um, the double tap room operates on exposed. And um, this is interesting. So it's basically a free gives you a free basic attack whenever someone has the exposed. And who's the strongest character with the exposed? It's of course it's Super Skull. Now I know there might be different differing opinions on Super Skull and where to place him specifically on this room six super school is gonna be insane and um, let me give you my argument uh, super scroll whether you're putting him in the exposed room or you putting him in the room six requires a cabal to get through either cabal or an apocalypse plus some uh, super score apocalypse combo or some insane combo with apocalypse and Kang and other guys so hence the reason I'm putting my super scroll not in the last room i'm putting a weaker team in the last room because the last room is actually pretty bonkers and we're gonna get to that so this team specifically uh this room specifically uh you want to have someone that has a exposed in, in their kit and you want to have a team with them to do area damage so Super Skull also operates best when he has two villains and two um, heroes as allies. And as you guys can see, we have Domamu for the revives and heal and everything and buffing up your team. We have self-healing Eternals, which they do massive area damage, 10 rewind. And we have Absorbing Man to just absorb the taunt and absorb the, the initial damage if you go in with Kang and Masters of Evil and all the other stuff. I had this uh, specific team last season because it's off the textbooks. Um, I didn't see anybody, any of the CCs at least have this team. And it always got me wins, at least got me one or two wins because they kept going in with Apocalypse New Warriors, with Masters of Evil New Warriors. And, and this failed actually. It, it might come to your surprise actually but um absorbing man being there it just throws the match off by so much and um eternals also they're above average in terms of speed so they're gonna go ahead and do their rewinds and um i've seen people sack it and get through it but if they're not using cabal it's going to be a fail and I've seen even Cabal fail because Cabal, they're typically slow. So sometimes if you go with only Cabal and Emma, Eternals will still go and rewind your team. And then Super Skull will delete one of your members off the bat. And then we have Dormammu with area damage, also double tapping. So it's going to be a bunch of double taps in this room. And it's going to require at least a Cabal or, or some big team, some chunky team to get through it. So that's the thought process behind this room, and um, I'm 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 going to keep it this way. And um, I'm I know that um, this ultimate room will be good for Eternals as well. Uh, but um, I think generally um, having a weaker team in room six will help throw the matches off a little bit more. So, for example, um, um, this room, actually, um, you can even put Super Skull with your Extreme for extra Exposed. So, you're going to have two two people with the expose and Gambit, Forge, and, and Cyclops, and Nightcrawler. Everybody has uh, area damage. So, you can take advantage of that. That's also a great option, by the way. But, um, again, since it's going to be Cabal, I put Super Skull with four people that I'm not going to be using on offense. And also, um, uh, it's since it's going to suck up a Cabal anyways, uh, why not just put a bunch of revives on them uh, just to make it more difficult and have Extreme in a separate room to make, uh, make it extra difficult. Then uh, we have this interesting room. I'll be back. This one gives villains revive as 50 health, 50% 50 health. And without a doubt, no questions asked. Best team 
for this room will be your superior team or your sinister superior team with Doc Ock. And the reason why is that uh, every time a character dro drops below 25% health, Doc Ock fills up their speed bar by 100%, gives them one extra turn. So um, basically, if, if your character dies, let's say if you have a lizard on there and lizard dies, lizard will spawn and he will get 100% extra on top of the turn that he so he's going to get essentially two turns back to back and um sorry guys and same goes with the rest of your team so without a doubt uh, best team will be your superior slash sinister however comma um they are about to sell us a new crucible team which will be the shuri wakanda new extra shuri we're getting and um basically i think um right now the the main two crucible teams are cabal and superior um new warrior to an extent but they're really phasing out they're not countering too many teams these days they're just camp uh, countering some og um ho horseman teams and stuff so essentially new warriors uh since they're going out we need one more newer team to be able to uh, spread our forces and superior is not going to work on mechs for money in this blood transfusion room uh, superior barely works on super scroll so uh, this room that i have super scroll and internals superior actually fails against them i've seen that within the last season um so as of right now that we don't have that newer wakanda team released yet i'm going to keep my superior on offense because we don't have too much offensive power and i'm going with a more balanced approach if i face those 90 million guys if i see a superior in room five i'm go just gonna mirror it that's gonna be uh an easier answer for me than try to figure out like uh some apocalypse combination and even that's gonna be very dependent on rng and also i will need cabal for other rooms especially if i see super scroll in another room if i see super scroll in room six which most people will do um i'm gonna have to do cabal there's no no other way around if i see super scroll in any room period i'm gonna do cabal so um going with hive mind here full hive mind and uh, you guys might say that surfer and gwenom they don't get the revives because they're not villains so I actually checked this uh, within a blitz fight myself because I was curious and I didn't see any of the CCs put, use this team on defense. So um, essentially, let's say if you you go into this team, you kill Carnage. Carnage will use the revive once that he has first, and um, he's gonna revive, and you will still have your Red Goblin charged with the charge so basically this team uh, throws off new warriors i think uh since they're gonna be hard targeting surfer and red goblin um initially i think everyone that is going to attack this team they're gonna uh, hard target red goblin which he will he will have a revive venom will have a revive carnage will have a revive and after those revives are served uh, those revive once effects are served then red goblin will go ahead and use his charges essentially are getting one extra revive on this team so this is the reason i'm placing this team because um i don't have any better villain teams as of right now um mainly my villains are uh, in the other rooms uh, other great options for this room um could be black cat dark holes could be super scroll apocalypse um but mainly superior will be the team for this room so superior um in this season it's going to be mainly a defensive team and secret defenders will probably come for offense um personally i have the extreme in the last room because they all have crazy alts and um i actually didn't put rogue specifically because i want sunspot to go ahead and put and use his offense down off the bat and use his ultimate after and put offense down defense down and disrupt on everyone so essentially 
the process is that Nightcrawler will go first and uh, Gambit will go with the ult. So um, Nightcrawler will also, when he ults, he applies a speed up to the entire team. Other great option for this room will be Infinity Watch. Awesome team. Um, uh, Infinity Watch, uh, specifically Adam Warlock's kit, um, has a very interesting point when he ults. So he's gonna have a shorter ultimate cooldown. So he uh, every time he ults, he applies safeguard to the entire Infinity Watch. So that's gonna be um, one way you can buff up your entire team. And then we have um, Nebula, which has a three turn cooldown on her evades. She's gonna constantly do the evades. She's gonna be pretty insane. Um, my Infinity Watch is pretty small, otherwise I, I could have put them there. Then we have uh, Gamora with the shift deletion, uh, massive damage on her ultimate and if she gets to delete someone she gets extra turn and she will do it again. Um, typically my infinity watch is super small so it can be easily beaten by a death seed or um, like a pegasus team or something like that so um, I'm going more with my great teams. Um, mixed combos and uh, characters that I'm not going to be using on office personally the plan is to move um, secret defenders um, into the first room and uh, put noir with max for money uh, in my blood transfusion room and that's that's going to be the plan as of right now uh, and uh, yeah this is this sums it up um, you guys let me know if you have any um, any uh, creative recommendation, anything that uh, might add to what we know. Um, from the information that I watched, um, this room specifically um, is interesting because Black Knight, even if you go in with a team that has the immunity, Black Knight will shred that immunity off of you. So uh, you will have all these negative effects. Uh, this rough is slow offense down defense down and you're gonna on top of that get trauma and bleed and um, This one will be just some people with area damage uh, Blood transfusion I'm operating off of my Robbie and secret defenders with noir and It, it can be countered with uh, still with new warriors with lizard but um, I'm guessing Robbie will get some extra turns or get to his ultimate faster. And my Robbie is pretty big. So um, he, he can wipe the entire new Warriors team if ne they're not uh, equally sized. And that sums it up for the video. I appreciate you guys for tuning in for another uh, video. Please feel free to let me know uh, if you have any interesting ideas that you're using on on your defense i'll be sure to include it um, in my next video and if you guys are happy with the video if you guys like what you see feel free to support my channel by liking and subscribing and share it in with your friends if not i just appreciate you being here and happy to have you back and see you on the next one